courtesy of Bevan, VK5BD's ATV channel and YouTube channel, VK1 WIA National News, Wireless Weather and Radio Sport is next. Not a sound to be heard. We pause and remember another silent key. Just starting this edition of WIA National News with news of a vital ham becoming a silent key. Yes, Robert Brunegger, Whiskey Bravo 4 APR, the inventor of APRS, has become a silent key. Thank you, Bob, for the incredible invention and participation in amateur radio over the years. As a really quick reminder, the Ross Hole contest logs are due in on Monday the 14th of February. Happy Valentine's Day to you all. 7-3, Trent, VK4TS. From Australia, this is the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. It certainly is the national news and it is for week commencing February 13, 2022. I'm Graham VK4BB. In just a moment, Jeff VK4ZPP with Discussion Point. From Q News and an item which has been picked up already by hams in both IARU Region 1 and 2 and also Pastor Oscar Rees, VK's IARU Region 3 representative, it came from Jeff VK4ZPP. It's to do with listening, responding to emergency traffic. Now the regional list of emergency traffic frequencies is regularly published but we don't appear to have any pattern or system of monitoring them. Certainly the authorities can say we have international response networks and the amateur radio service isn't necessary. However, there are many people in various places on the globe that do have amateur radio and HFCB as local communications or for recreational use. Many people have complained of the tedium of having to isolate during the pandemic and I've seen that several skeds have appeared on an ad hoc basis just to allow people to call in and interact with others. The international net for sailors goes on, particularly on 20 metres, and on the land mobile services in this country, listening watches are maintained. With time in our hands and equipment on the bench, just what would it take to tune into one of these emergency frequencies and spend some time just monitoring whilst going on with the day's routine? What would it take to have clubs organise a roster of willing members to fill the spots? Or a roster of... And how much more would it take to have a national contact point to action matters such as reports? To me, this doesn't seem like a radical proposal or an onerous task for any one person. Even operators by themselves could do this. We think of ourselves as person-to-person communicators and the bulk of the time there will be just the usual noise we expect with no signals to monitor. I know there are people who spent many hours monitoring on the CB band emergency channel, and there are still CB operators doing this. With the band conditions providing interesting DX, we can no longer say that listening out on emergency frequencies will simply be local. Region 3 is a very much populated area, and at the same time a very remote cluster of radio operators in our part of the world. I believe we have an opportunity to make a small but perhaps profoundly important contribution in times of need. I'm Jeff Emery, and that's what I think. How about you? Now, international news with Jason, VK2LAW. Hello. UNESCO has suggested several themes that can be celebrated on World Radio Day. Today, February 13, including trust in radio journalism, the accessibility of radio and the viability of radio stations. Radio has a key role to play in several areas, UNESCO said, beginning with producing independent and high-quality content, providing information to a diverse group of individuals and working to transform loyal audience engagement into financial stability, especially for small, medium and non-profit stations. World Radio Day got its start in 2011 when member states of UNESCO adopted February 13, the anniversary of the 1946 founding of United Nations Radio as World Radio Day, in an effort to raise greater awareness of the importance of radio 
to encourage decision makers to provide access to information via radio and to enhance networking and international cooperation amongst broadcasters. Finland's National Amateur Radio Society, SRAL, has made the latest issue of their magazine, Radio Amateur, available free for everyone to read as a convenient PDF. The editorial on page one looks at the move in Norway to introduce an entry-level amateur radio qualification based on SEPT ECC Report 89. At the present time, Finland doesn't have an entry-level licence, Their lowest class is SEPT Novice, equivalent to UK Intermediate, USA General. Norway is aiming for an entry-level qualification that permits 10 watts output on all bands and allows home construction of transmitting equipment. The National Amateur Radio Society in Italy, ARI, reports that they only lost 13 members in 2021, but the membership is ageing. The Secretary General of ARI, Mauro Pregliasco, India 1, Juliet, Quebec, Juliet, writes, The ageing process is a phenomenon that affects the life of our sections. This essentially depends on two factors. First is of a structural nature and is directly connected to the demographic decline in our country. The second is a direct consequence of technological progress, which makes radio less and less interesting for young people. In ARI's statistics, the mode of a set of numbers is the value that appears most frequently. In our case, it's made up of 59-year-old members. The range that includes the greatest number of members is from 55 to 64 years. Free virtual event. This marks 80 years since the opening of Bletchley Park's Bomb Hut 11A in March 1942. Bletchley Park's research historian Dr David Kenyon will explore the impact the bomb machine had and how it was used to combat the Enigma cipher system. Wednesday 23rd of March 2022 at 1300. 80 years ago in March 1942, Hunt 11A opened as the new home of Bletchley Park's top secret bomb machines. Designed by Alan Turing and Gordon Welchman, inspired by pre-war work by Polish cryptanalysts, The bombs played a vital role in helping the codebreakers break the infamous Enigma cipher. In news from Region 2, microphone manufacturer Heil Sound has new top leadership for the first time in its 56-year history. The Illinois-based company said Bob and Sarah Heil have transferred ownership to current President CEO Ash Levitt and Director of Operations Steve Warford. Sarah Heil has retired, but Bob will continue to do outreach work and product design within the amateur radio space under the title Founder and CEO Emeritus, it stated. The company said Levitt and Warford each began working with Heil Sound as teenagers, building and packaging products. Levitt took a different career path in academia for a number of years, but continued to regularly consult with Heil Sound during that time. He returned to the company full-time in 2017 and assumed the role of president in 2020. Warford worked his way up in the company during his tenure and has been responsible for daily operations for the past several years. The Dayton Hamvention is still on as of now, but General Chairman Rick Olnutt, Whiskey Sierra 8 Golf, said in a statement that the Hamvention would follow state guidance, which he expects to include recommendations but not requirements, for masking and social distancing at large events. It's become obvious, he said, that the state of Ohio is very unlikely to call a halt to large gatherings anytime soon. As of now, Oldnut added there are no plans to offer on-site COVID testing during the Hamvention, and he does not anticipate checking vaccination status at the show. He says updates will be posted online at hamvention.org. In news from Region 3... Indonesia's Arari reports the communications regulator has asked amateurs to improve the quality of radio amateurs through local meetings. A translation of the post by the National Amateur Radio Organisation Arari reads, Directorate General of Postal Resources and Devices and Informatics of the Ministry of Communication and Informatics encourages the improvement of amateur radio quality through local meetings. The head of Arari Centre stated that the Improved Quality Member Program 
would provide technical and organisational knowledge and skills. Orari Centre will launch the Orari Digital Application. One of its functions is to provide EKTA services, call signs that can be downloaded, delivery of letters or documents through the application and others, so that the service can be faster and more accessible to members, he explained. For VK1 WI8 National News in Sydney, I'm Jason, VK2 LAW. This is the home service of the Wireless Institute of Australia through VK1 WIA. Now, operational news with Felix, VK4 FUQ. Hello there. Now, contest wise, 2022. March is the John Memorial Field Day, 19th and 20th of March. Harry Angel Memorial 80 Minute Sprint, Saturday, 7th of May. The Don Edwards Memorial Slow Moors Contest, Saturday evening, 14th May, between 6 pm and 9 pm, Eastern Standard Time, on 80 metres. Sunday afternoon, 15th of May, between 1 pm and 4 pm, Eastern Standard Time, on 40 metres. International CQ Pride Contest, June 4 6. BK Shires Contest, 11th June. WIA VHF UHF Field Days, Winter 2022. Saturday 25 June through Sunday 26 June. IAA UHF World Championship Next Contest is July 9 and 10. Dex Window. We start by heading north northwest from E to the Northern Territory and Peter VK8ZZ on behalf of the Darwin Amateur Radio Club VK8DA. On the 19th of February 2022, that's Saturday next weekend, it will be 80 years since the bombing of Darwin in 1942. To commemorate this event, the Darwin Amateur Radio Club will be holding a DX marathon on the 19th of February 2022 using the special call sign VI80BOD. We will be operating from the old Qantas hangar in Parap. This hangar was standing in 1942 and did sustain some damage in the raids. Operation will be on most bands 80, 15 and 10 metres. QSL via EQSL or via the Bureau. Hope to meet you on the air. This has been Peter VK8ZZ for the Darwin Amateur Radio Club. Thanks, Peter. Throughout the month of February, Rob, PA0RDY, is activating PF88ANT from Amsterdam, marking the 19th Antarctic Activity Week celebration, which will take place between February 21st and 27th. Meanwhile, in Antarctica itself, Chris, W2RTO, is active from the KC4USV McMurdo Station on Ross Island on 20 metres using SSB and FT8 and will be on the air until mid-2022. Suffolk Stroke 70 permitted for Platinum Jubilee celebrations. Following a request by the RSGB, Ofcom have indicated that stations wishing to retain their usual regional secondary locator to identify their DXCC entity, may use the Suffolk Stroke 70 to celebrate the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. It is also permitted to use the Stroke 70 suffix with the GQ Stroke MQ Stroke 2Q prefix. St. Patrick's Day Award The organisers of the St. Patrick's Day Award are excited to announce the launch of a new web page where visitors can learn everything they need to know about the St. Patrick's Day Award. On their new page, you will also find the simple registration form to be completed by all participants in this year's festivities, which will be running from the 16th to the 18th of March 2022. Previous years have seen over 100 amateurs registered to participate, and we are hopeful that this will continue to grow. The award is an opportunity for amateurs around the world to celebrate St. Patrick's Day and turn the airwaves green. Austral Islands Day Expedition Several members of the Perseverance Dex Group will activate Rovay Island in the Austral Islands, French Polynesia, between April 15 and April 29, approximately 12 operating days. The plan is to have radios on the air continuously, as propagation allows. The call sign TX5N was issued for this project. The team expects to make between 60,000 and 80,000 QSOs. Austrian special event. Look for the special event call sign OE22M to be active sometime between April 23rd to commemorate the anniversary of Guglielmo's Marconi's birthday, April 25th, 1874, and to celebrate International Marconi Day, Saturday, April 23rd. Zimbabwe. 
QRV is Z21A and Z22A from Harare until February 20. Activities on 160 to 10 metres using CW, SSB, FT8 and FT4. QSL both via DJ6TF. Ukrainian readers and listeners QSL via UI5ZZ. The DXCC most wanted entities list has been updated. The list contains 340 entities. The following are the top four entities. P5, DPRK, North Korea. 3Y, Stroke B, Booby Island. FT5, Stroke W, Crozy Island. BS7H, Scarborough Reef. Just repeating, this is where we look at some repeaters in the listening footprint. Joining us, as promised last week, is Nathan, VK5DAD from VK5 South Coast Amateur Radio Club. Our club's 70cm C4 FM repeater on 439.825 with a negative 5 offset is now linked to YSX through a 4G modem with the help and support of Phil Kern and the team at Kern Wi-Fi. Our 2 metre repeater on 146.675 FM with a negative 6 offset is also on air. Our club's 10 metre repeater up on 29.620 FM with a negative 0.1 offset and a 2 metre simplex gateway on 147.675 FM which you need a subtone of 141.3 is also on air. Our club's APRS Digi repeater is working well and also on air. Our 23 centimetre repeater is currently off air and under repair. Don't forget, we have a fully operational HF club station under VK5 ARC. On Sunday the 24th of April 2022, we have our annual buy and sell at our club room, so please keep the date free. Pop on down and say good day. We'd love to put a face to the voice we hear on the radio. 73s from all at the South Coast Amateur Radio Club. Now, just before I go, some distance records smashed. Some new long distance records are being claimed for contacts using amateur radio satellites. Congratulations to Juan Philippe, A65GC, and Jerome, F4DXV, for their QSO on HO113. Made the United Arab Emirates and France. Their contact reportedly spanned a distance of 5,298 kilometres. Jerome, F4DXV, also reported the contact with Sergi, ES4RM, which would be a new record for AO109. That contact between Estonia and France covered 2,445 kilometres, setting a new record for that satellite. For BK1WIA National News, I'm Felix, VK4FUQ in Ingham. Media Watch, and as Jason has already told us, World Radio Day. But here's World Radio Day and a special program. Sweden's SSA reports the Swedish DX Federation will be taking part in a special broadcast on 6070 kHz and 9670 kHz for World Radio Day today, Sunday, Feb 13. 1200 to 1300 UTC, 9670, with a replay between 1600 and 1700 UTC, on 6070 via channel 292 in Germany. As usual, there'll be interviews with famous people in the Swedish DX world, nice music and various other shorter elements. The program has been put together by Goran Lindmark. Now to the Q News Workbench, the Nuts and Volts Report. We all know that you can convert heat into electricity. Usually you do that in some form of steam, but there are other methods too, including thermocouples. If you've ever seen something producing waste heat, you'll appreciate Penn State's work to harvest power from hot pipes. The idea is simple in theory. Create a flexible thermoelectric generator that can wrap around hot pipes or other surfaces to gather otherwise lost heat. The devices can produce up to 150% more power per unit area compared to other thermoelectric generators. A three square inch test device produced over 50 watts. Scale that up to an industrial pipe hundreds of feet long and you could create some serious power. To accomplish this, the scientists used strips of six thermocouples and connected them for a total of 72 thermocouples. Liquid metal between layers improved the device's performance. Now this isn't a totally new idea. Russia was famous for making radios way back in the 1950s that operated using a generator that went around the flue of a kerosene lamp. 
Since the Russians were pulling this off in the 1950s, converting heat into electricity is obviously nothing new. Of course, your body creates heat too, so why not use that? From Australia, this is the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. Available on RF and on demand 24-7 from the wia.org.au website. Intruder Watch, the Enforcement Zone, and Germany's Dark reports on a pirate station that was broadcasting in the 3.5 and 7 meg amateur radio bands. In December and January, an underground political station appeared on 3500 and 7000 kilohertz. The transmissions took place usually in upper sideband and could be heard right throughout Europe. The radio program in Italian and English was directed against government corona measures. The Direction Finding Service of the Intruder Monitoring Department was able to determine the approximate location, whereupon they cooperated with the federal network agency, the Benetza, to have these transmissions ended. The Benetza was then able to take measures with the Italian colleagues that ultimately led to the broadcast being completely discontinued. Pirate spam an infamous Soviet shortwave radio station with memes. The UVB-76 number station, which dates from the Soviet era but is still online today and is used to broadcast everything from Gangnam Style to audio that draws memes when inspected under a spectrum analyzer. For decades, the number station, known as UVB-76, has emitted an enigmatic series of beeps and a voice reading numbers and names in what people suspect is a long-running communication method for Russian intelligence. Since the broadcast is public, pirates are able to use their software-defined radios, their SDR transmitters, to effectively flood the frequency with noise and memes. While many number stations have become obsolete or redundant, several broadcasts remain on the air, much to the fascination of amateur radio hobbyists. Now, special interest group news with Bruce, VK3 Triple F. And a very good day to you. Worldwide special interest group news. And to start, summits on the air, worldwide flora, fauna program, parks on the air and other adventure groups. WIA congratulates SOTA VK on their 10-year anniversary. This is a great milestone and achievement by many dedicated SOTA Summits on the Air operators, promoting one of the various and popular aspects of amateur radio activities with a combination of the outdoors and bushwalking. We'd suggest you head to WIA front page news. Just go to wia.org.au. Worldwide Special Interest Groups Computing The University of Cambridge has announced the creation of the Raspberry Pi Computing Education Research Centre. With computers and digital technologies increasingly shaping all of our lives, it's more important than ever that every young person, whatever their background or circumstances, has meaningful opportunities to learn about how computers work and how to create with them. The Raspberry Pi Computing Education Research Centre wants to increase understanding of what works in teaching and learning computing, with a particular focus on young people who come from backgrounds that are traditionally underrepresented in the field of computing or who experience educational disadvantage. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Final Frontier The Kenwood D-710 transceiver on the International Space Station, ISS, is in cross-band FM mode again. The downlink frequency is 437.8 MHz and the uplink is on 145.990 MHz with a subtone of 67 Hz. The ISS signal is quite strong. A simple dual-band antenna and transceiver is sufficient for stable contacts. Worldwide Special Interest Groups Medical Healthy Hams USKA, the union of Swiss radio amateurs, has launched a health initiative for its members. Recognising that older YLs and OMs would like to exchange their experiences and support each other when confronted with health issues. Overseen by physician Dr. Heinz Hofstetter, HB9HVS, help and advice is available to members of all ages, 
accessible via the Health Advisor Ham Group on the USKA web portal. Worldwide Special Interest Group, Military. In addition to fulfilling the American Legion's mission of continuing to serve community, state and nation, post programs and activities offer avenues to attract new members who find those avenues meaningful to them. More members means more opportunities to fulfill the Legion's mission. The Legion is much like VK's RSL. One such avenue is a post-ham radio club. The National American Legion Amateur Radio Club, T-A-L-A-R-C, estimates there are more than 50 post clubs and more than 4,500 Talak Legionnaires across the country. Among these are clubs in Florida and Colorado that have established themselves as active participants in Legion life. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, QRP and Weak Signal Communication. The International Whisper Beacon Group plan to provision a Whisper transmitter in ZL. WSPR, pronounced Whisper, stands for Weak Signal Propagation Reporter. The Whisper transmitter, custom made by Zactec, based in Sweden, was supplied to Branch 20 of NZ Art by the International Whisper Beacon Group at no cost. It's a 200 milliwatt RF output, 5 band. 80, 40, 20, 15 and 10 metres. The transmitter is controlled by Arduino firmware, which along with a built-in GPS, takes care of all timing, including the five-band coordinated whisper band hopping transmit schedule, following the WSJTX implementation protocol. Currently, globally, there are 40 Whisper 200 milliwatt beacons operational on a 24-7 basis. All are coordinated to transmit on the same band at the same time. The ZL2KO 200 milliwatt Whisper signal, to name just a few, has been heard in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, Luxembourg, East Coast USA and Finland, both on short and long path that's approximately 18,000 kilometres on 200 milliwatts. Also, North and South America and Antarctica. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, YOTA, Youth on the Air. Over in New Zealand at the NZ Art, their National Representative Society, a new youth officer, Brendan Graham Island, ZL2SB, has been appointed. Whilst over in Region 2, amateur radio and after-school program. The Folkwear 4-H Ham Radio Club provides local youth with opportunities to explore science, technology, engineering, art and maths through amateur radio communications and electronics projects. Folkwear now reports the after-school program will make 4-H activities accessible to more children. The program will engage them in hands-on STEM projects while helping them develop life skills. Programs offered throughout the year will target different grade levels and student interests. A pilot program at Grace Miller Elementary School in the fall focused on robotics for kindergartners and first graders. Students tackled challenges such as designing a battle bot that they controlled with lightsabers and coding a robot to navigate through a maze. Other potential offerings include space exploration, veterinary science and coding. There will also be opportunities to partner with 4-H clubs. For example, the Fauquier County 4-H Ham Radio Club recently received a grant from Amateur Radio Digital Communications to build a ham radio trailer that can be hauled to different schools to give participants a hands-on experience. I'm Bruce, VK3 Triple F from Sunny Bendigo. Now to tie the ribbon, the 2022 social scene. In VK6, the Peel Amateur Radio Group Swap Meet, the 26th of February, Manjua Bowling Club at 9am. VK4, Redfest, Saturday, April 9, St. Michael's College, Caboolture. VK5, the South Coast Amateur Radio Club's Buy and Sell, Sunday, April 24. And also in VK5, Australian Fox Hunting Championship and the Sir Convention, Mount Gambier, Queen's Birthday Weekend in June. So now, until next we meet, I am Graham, VK4BB, walk softly.
There's a really quick reminder the Ross Hull contest logs are due in on Monday the 14th of February. Happy Valentine's Day to you all. 7-3 Trent, VK4TS. From Australia, this has been the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. Courtesy of Bevan, VK5, BD's ATV and YouTube channel, this has been WIA National News. We're back now, live and local, and your voice, your callbacks. And don't forget, tick like.